tell us where you were and the circumstances regarding your contract, you're coming to an end and you're also dealing with an injury. Yes. So, um, wow. It's crazy to think that that was only like a few months ago. So back in, I guess, November, like November 4th was my last day at Watch Fox before I went on medical leave because I had, I retore my ACL. So uh, the last, what, six weeks of my job, five of them were spent at home on medical leave because I had to get a total ACL repair, um, which had me out of work for five weeks. Now, mind you, that was also around the time when my contract was ending, I had already decided not to resign because I had kind of reached the cap at my, at my previous job. Um, there just wasn't any higher I could go. I wasn't really learning anything new and I had gotten very comfortable. And so all my life I've been raised on the saying that complacency is where ambition dies. And so I knew that I couldn't stay where I was. Um, and that was in Columbia, but, South Carolina. Yes, I was in Columbia, South Carolina. I was the morning reporter at the Fox affiliate there, uh, WACH Watch Fox. Been there for almost two years at that point. Learned a lot, did a lot of amazing things, had a lot of great experiences, but it was time to move on. So um, I got to do my contract, you know, mind you, probably that was six weeks out of surgery. So I still had like a big bulky knee brace. I was going to physical therapy two times a week. And on top of all of that going on, I didn't have one job lead. Like I didn't have one thing that was like, oh, this is where I'm going or this is where I'm going to end up. I remember my family being very concerned, like, wait a minute, not only are you hurt, you know, yeah, you have medical bills piling up, physical therapy piling up, um, all these bills. I did not have a job. This was around right before Christmas time. And I remember my parents being like, I don't know, like, what are you doing? And I'm just like, listen. I took this leap of faith because I know that not only is there better, but I deserve better for what's next. And um, granted, there were a lot of opportunities that probably could have sped my job search process up quicker. Like I could have kind of just settled for any old job. I mean, like I did have opportunities and there were job opportunities that came around. The only issue was I was very intentional in what I wanted to do next. And I knew that like, if I made this giant leap of faith, then I couldn't just settle when something first came around. Um, but in saying all of that, I, um, you know, so December 18th, well, December 17th was my last day working at Watch Fox. My first day working at my new job wasn't until March 18th. So, so three months. Three months, yeah. And within that three months, you know, you're still healing. I mean, yep. so anyone still who's something tough knows it's yeah. not easy on your psyche when you're just like healing and you're trying, you just can't wait to get mm -hmm. better. It's cold, you know, yeah. you're in your months and you get opportunities, but they're not quite perfect. So just, I mean, don't tell us what the opportunities are. We don't want to, you know, oh, yeah. make anyone comfortable. but tell us a little bit about some of the calls that you got in a general way. Um, yeah. So just in a general way. So obviously like I was reporting when I was in Columbia. So that's my first job. I was a morning reporter. And so a lot of positions while they were great, they were just basically doing what I had been doing in a different place and maybe even a different market size, which, you know, would have been fine if that's what I wanted and that's what I wanted to pursue next. But I was very torn between what I wanted next because I knew that I needed to add a bunch of new tools to the toolbox. And the only way I was gonna be able to do that was to step out of my comfort zone and find a position that forced me to do something different. So my biggest thing was I wasn't just looking for a job that was a this or that type of job. I was looking for a job that was an and job. I wanted to do something where it was, I was a blank and a blank or a this and a that. I didn't want to be this or that. And so, right. so a lot of the calls I received were jobs that were solely like this or that. There was no kind of like a versatility or combination. And so, you know, since I knew what my intentions were and since I knew what I was trying to do, you know, I've always been told that this career is very much like chess, not checkers. And so very strategic in how you move. And so I knew that for what I wanted to do next, if I'm thinking about five years down the line, yeah. there was a very specific job I had to find that was going to take some time. And I think that like, it was really interesting because I had a friend that was going through the same thing at the same time. Yeah. And so, you know, I found myself, you know, like when I would get low or, you know, like if I had like 
you know, like when it would get difficult because, you know, it did get difficult. But the thing about it is I just didn't let it stay difficult. So it was very nice to have a friend that was going through the same thing because I kind of like anytime I started to feel sad, I just like sent a whole bunch of motivation and encouragement her way. And oh. somehow that like reverse, you know, type of energy came back on me and I was back in a good space. And it was interesting because so many people kept asking me, you know, so many family members. So what are you doing? What's next? Right. Um, right. You know, everybody, te you know, text messages, emails, you know, so many people from Columbia were on my Facebook page. Like, where are you going? What are you doing? And so, you know, as the days keep going by and, you know, you still don't have an answer and you're wondering like, okay, well, like, what do I do? And like, that's the biggest, like, that's the biggest space of when you need faith, you know, because there was nothing else I could tell people other than the fact of, I am taking my time, I am weighing these options, and I am trying to figure life out. And that was very much the truth. And so it was nice because I started using that time as like fun employment. Like I was like, well, listen, if I'm not working, I'm going to make sure that I'm putting myself in the right opportunities to be able to find a position. And until that happens, I'm gonna enjoy life because my current news director, it's funny, one of the first things she ever told me, she was like, you know, I really appreciate you taking a break because you have the rest of your life to work. She's like, you're going to work for the rest of your life. And yeah. so what some people may saw as a, you know, oh, this is a period of time where she didn't work. I saw it as this is a period of time where I got to breathe. It also worked out beautifully because I was still, I'm still doing, I'm still doing rehab on my knee to this day. I still have rehab until August. So during that time of not working, it's beautiful how things are played out to work for your benefit if you look at them in the correct way because i stopped looking at not having a job and that time of not working more as a time of like rejuvenation like physical healing like a time to spend with my family a time to reconnect with people a time to read books like it was very much the perspective that kept me pushing through the hard times because i think it's real easy if, if all you're looking for is negative, that's all you're gonna see. So if you're in the if you're in a position where, like, say you're at a station and or you might be there might be a whole bunch of negative things happening. Well, if that's all you choose to focus on, like, that's all you're gonna see. Like, that, that's all you're ever gonna see. And I remember my dad taught me that when I was younger. Like, he was like, look for a red car. And so of course, like when we're driving down the road, all I'm seeing is red cars is the only thing I'm focused on. And so my dad always used that as a way to say, remember that when times get hard, remember that when times aren't good, that if that's all you're looking for, that's all you'll ever see. And there's so much other perspectives to have. And I really think that like learning to look for the good in a really bad time, what some would consider a bad time, yes. really helped me push through that, you know, and just being able to focus on the perspective of, I knew where I wanted to get to and I knew where I was coming. So it just was trying to manage the middle. So that, that, that's what I would always tell people. Like, I'm just managing this middle. Like, I know where I'm coming from. Don't know where I'm going, but I know I'm going somewhere. So I just need to manage where I'm at right now. And so day by day is all I took it. Yeah. I mean, I know there are other people that are, I mean, it's, it's so important what you're saying. It's so mm -hmm. important. And there are people that I talk to that reach out to me and they're like, Girl, I'm living by like, you know, uh, like right at the poverty line here. It's really tough. Yeah. It's really, mm -hmm. really tough. Like I'm not making a lot of money. I'm not growing in my job. I don't know if I should resign. I don't have something else. And you know, everybody is different, right? Yeah. Like sometimes we have to just pay our bills and sometimes we have to resign. And, and like, I hate to tell anybody to do that if they're not being treated well or not yeah. growing or, or they're in a toxic environment because Lord knows that exists in so many places and so many newsrooms. I hear all the time. And so, you know, what would your advice be to the person who is getting at the end of their contract and they don't have something? Would you tell mm -hmm. them? I mean, it's kind of hard, you know, to give someone else advice, but what, because you were there, what would you say? Yeah. So it's very interesting because I've like talked to a few people who are in that same situation and granted, like everybody's journey, especially in this industry is so different. Um, however, when it comes down to the question of resigning, like as cliche as it sounds, because like, I definitely wasn't a person who all like, who had these like gut feelings or like, who like listened to like their inner self. Like I never really like understood that concept until I had to de decide on resigning. And the biggest thing I remember was just feeling this like complete and utter, like, just like no peace about it. Like I wasn't like, I tried to rationalize 
you know, staying a little longer, like maybe, like maybe I could work on some things a little bit more, but there was something in my soul that was just like, no, like, like your time is up. And while no, you don't have anything set up, there is greater coming. And so I know that it's very difficult, especially if you're in like a, your first or second market and you're in a city that, you know, you're not from. And the thing is, the truth of the matter is that bills do come, like they do. And there's there's no way to avoid that discussion. You know, even while pursuing your dreams, like you still have to make sure that you can eat and live. And so I think the biggest thing that I've learned through this process is, A, you have to learn the correct questions to ask. Because I know with me, I didn't even, you know, it was either, it, like for me, I was just completely sold on not doing it. But I didn't even ponder the question of, well, will you let me work month to month? Will you let me, re, like, not even resign, but will you let me freelance for the next three months? Like knowing that you have options, because I will say that that's the one thing I didn't do. I just assumed that it was, well, I didn't assume. I was also told that I had to resign or nothing. So that might be a little bit different, but I didn't even go the extra mile to say, okay, well, what are some feasible situations that we could work out where I'm not resigning a whole other contract, where I'm still work like to be able to just ask the question, because I didn't even ponder that further so that you can at least know your options. Yeah. And then the thing about it is, you know, I also like when I didn't resign, like I lived in my hometown, so it was a little bit different. And I know that for several people, they've had to swallow their pride and move back home or move back into a different types of situation and so they can figure out their own situation mm -hmm. and i think that like in this industry it's so interesting because it's very ego driven and i try to stay away from ego but i know what it looks like to be at the end of a contract and everybody's wondering where you're going everybody's asking you what's next mm -hmm. and the ego part in you wants to say oh well i have this lined up and oh i'm going here and oh i'm going there but honestly like if it's not your time for that to happen, no matter how big the ego is, it's not going to happen. Just like when it is time for it to happen for you, it's going to happen without any person being in the way of it. So the thing about it is that I've had to tell people like, if you can move back or if you can get into a situation that allows you a little bit more financial flexibility to figure it out, then do that without being so worried about what it looks like to everybody that's wondering what's next. Because I think like that was... Yes. And I think like that was the biggest thing too. Like even like what I was doing, you know, I, my, I can be completely honest. Like I wanted to like hit my station and be like, oh, well I'm going here next. So bump y'all I'm out, you know, like my old station, but that's just not that that's not how life worked out for me. You know, like I had to like patiently wait for things to fall and work out in that manner. And through that time period, I really learned how to manage my ego and not be so worried about what somebody what somebody else is going to think, you know, about what I'm doing. And I think that this industry, you really have to take a step back and wonder if what you're doing is for you or the status, like to satisfy people that you don't even know just to I have know. something to say. I felt so, the same way. It's an and honest it's conversation. It, it's a hard thing to admit too, because I had to be honest with myself and say like, Hey, like, I mean, even going through the job hunt process, like there were certain jobs that probably would have seemed like maybe cooler to tell people about, but in the all, like when I like actually took my ego out of it and realized well, what is really going to benefit me moving forward, it's like, okay, we, we got to change some things up. But it's an industry where we get very, very trapped in the expectations of others. And so those people are not paying our bills and doing our they're work. Not, they're not doing anything they don't but sitting there criticizing. So they're, they're there to criticize. criticize. Hello. They're there for that. And then when the bill comes in the mail and you're like, oh, let me open up this bill. Where are you then? Nowhere. Nowhere to be found. So <laughs> it's not even worth it. But 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 it is interesting because it, it, it's a hard thing because especially people are unhappy. You know, you never want to tell somebody to stay in a situation. But it's also like very much too like sometimes people do have to resign to get to the next move. Like some like, like resigning. And I, I hate sometimes the stigma that resigning carries because Sometimes people genuinely want to be where they are. And sometimes resigning gives them the ability to have more options, to maybe get more chances at anchoring or doing something different or doing something that maybe their initial job didn't even have laid out. So right. it's very much, once again, like blooming where you're planted. Like sometimes you're in a place, like I believe no matter how dark or how bad or how awful things look, like you're exactly where you're supposed to be right now. 
So yeah. wherever that is and how you move through this to something else, you are where you want to, like you are where you need to be. It may not be where you want to be, but you're there for a purpose. So trying to learn and figure out, well, what do I need to do to move my life forward in that moment is what the focus needs to be. So when people are trying to figure out, do I need to resign? Well, let's, let's lay everything out. Like, let's look at the pros, let's look at the cons. What are we going to do if we don't? And if we don't resign, do we have options for money? And do we have, you know, I've always been told, like some people have decided not to resign because they've had, you know, like savings. Like they decided they were going to save up, you know, maybe three months worth of whatever so they could really figure out life. Or some people have gone back home. They've moved back home. They're, they're like their family have, you know, been able to take them back in and, you know, help them out. Or some people have roommates and then some people end up getting side jobs until they figure out, you know, as they manage the middle. But I just think it, it takes a person being less prideful and more strategic in those situations. And so I think that it, like, I think the biggest thing that hinders us in those times aren't really the times, but our pride and how we pursue our options and what we need to do to move forward. Pride and ego will lead you to some terrible places and terrible oh. decisions at times. And That's believe me, I have always thought like, when I leave a place, I want to be like, you know, bye-bye, I'm Drop out, the mic. Drop the mic, I'm going to this great place. And people just don't get it. And I'm not here for that. I'm not here mm -hmm. to satisfy random person A's curiosity and yeah. wanting to know and all of that stuff. So I totally get it. But you know, it's a really great thing that you're talking about because we all have ego. We all oh, do. Yeah. And if you get, and if you let it get in the way of stuff, you know, it's, you're going to be derailed, right? Yes. And then there's yes. you talking the way you're talking, which is so beautiful. And so there's no ego. It, it, it's like, where did you get that? Where'd that come from? Is that family raising you that way? Is that faith? What is it? Where'd you get um, this strength from? Growing up, like I've always been taught above everything, like humility. And I think that like, there have been several situations and circumstances in which I may have not used the best humility or I have let my ego get the best of me where I have suffered the consequences. And so through my family teaching me, you know, this stage at a very young age, you know, just to be humble and to remember that, you know, to whom much is given, much is required. And that when you're placed in certain positions that they are privileged positions, so you move a little bit differently. And so I think that like, once I fully understood my role and what I'm doing currently as a journalist and seeing it as more of a like community service and like a like a like a public servant type of role versus like the ego I'm on TV type of role I just started to look and move a lot differently because I understand the privilege that I have to be in this position to do the career that I do every single day so knowing that that comes with a privilege I think allows you to move in a much different way than having ego be the center of your focus because now Ego isn't my center. My purpose is the center and the, the community that I serve is the center. So like, I already removed myself out of it already, you know? And so I think it's interesting because I do meet a lot of younger journalists or people who are, you know, maybe still in school. And the, the first thing, you know, you always ask them, it's like, oh, you know, like, what do you want to do? And usually, typically, like eight times out of 10, it's, oh, I want to anchor. And then you say, oh, okay. So like, so why, why anchoring? It's like, oh, well, you know, like you're the main face. And, and it's very much a very me, 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 me answer. And it's never like, oh, I have the ability to connect and serve a community. I have the ability to um, advocate for people, tell stories that help encourage and motivate people. I, I show people's worst days and make, you know, empathy come from other sides of the town. I don't know. Also, it's always me, 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 me. And so I think that like, when your vision of this industry starts with like yourself, like this industry will will show you soon enough that yeah. you can't have that ego to survive. Like right. egos, egos don't survive long term in this industry. Because the thing about it is, like you're you're always working with people. You're always you're yeah. always a second to something else. So it's like you can't be so consumed with like your ego and what like you're doing that you forget the purpose. You know. And so I think that like through my family and through a variety of life lessons. I have learned to really um, take myself out of some positions. And I think as well, you know, removing ego has taught me how to speak kinder to myself. Um, mm -hmm. And I think That's that- you know, I'm a, 
Yes, and I'm a huge believer in your words, um, you know, life and death is in the power of the tongue and your words carry heavy, heavy connotations over your life. So I think that like, once you're out of that ego phase, you're not going to talk about yourself in like such a like high affluent way, nor will you tear yourself down so, so low when something happens, like you're able to not get too high and not get too low. Um, tell us about your job now, this job that you waited for. Yes, why, yes. Tell us what you're doing and why you like it so much. So currently now I am at Channel 4, um, the local station in Jacksonville. Um, I am the 4.30 morning anchor, traffic anchor and reporter. So I um, basically like how my day works. Like I get in at 3.30. I anchor the uh, 4.30 show. So it's from 4.30 to 5. It's a solo anchoring show. It's me. And then the meteorologist comes in and does one weather hit. But other than that, it's me by myself for about 30 minutes. Um, and then I go to traffic. And so I report traffic for the rest of the morning show. And um, <laughs> then after the morning show, I'm sorry, these lists are crazy. So after the morning show is over, um, then I go to um, and I report. So it's like a really interesting shift because I wear like three different hats. Yeah, but um, hat. So at my job, I'm probably one of the few people that does that like i know i know i'm the only person with my actual shift because it's very much a hybrid shift because i'm not a morning reporter i'm not a day side reporter i'm like a three hour reporter because i have like three hours at the end of my shift to like go and like turn a story granted like traffic is my main beat but obviously like there's not traffic stories happening every single day so then it's cool because i'm able to cover a variety of other types of news um but it's i mean the job itself is just so interesting because there's so much versatility. I know what I was really looking for in my next job was a way to really be able to get a whole bunch of experience and just to add a lot of different things to the toolbox. I've never wanted to be like a one trick pony. And so now literally every single day I like take on one hat, take it off, put on another one. It's just really cool. So I love the ability to, you know, I start off anchoring and then I'm giving people, you know, traffic hits like, woo. Don't go down that interstate. You're going to be at work a whole hour later. Your boss is going to be mad. That's and great. so it's cool Period. because, yeah, and it's nice because traffic, there's no, like, set way to do it. Like, it's yeah, a, like credit, it. there's wrong ways you could do it. But it's cool because the right way really infuses, like, you and um, it's a lot of creative control. And then being able to report, I have a lot of creative control, too, because I'm booking those stories. I'm setting that stuff up. So um, it's cool. It's, it's a lot different than the job I worked prior um you know like I'm on like a beast of a morning show it's like our morning show is from 4 30 to 10. Oh. It's, it's a long morning show we um since since we're an independent station we don't have to break out for national um wow. news or anything so like we go it's a it's a beast of a show um but it's so cool because at my station it's a mix between people who have been here for decades and maybe people who have just been here for a few years. So the ability to learn across all levels is just really cool because like I said, there are some people that were born and raised in Jacksonville that are currently working there. And then there are some people that moved there and could, like, you know, had families. And so it's beautiful to see how much diversity exists within the experiences in the station. Um, and they're also just a station that's very like, we like we're, we're getting to it okay so we are we like very well old machine um it's just like i said a lot different than where i was um just you know it's, it's it's just a whole different level you know and so um so it's cool it's it's very it's been great to really learn and you know it's it's interesting because you know i have to make sure i'm being very um kind to myself during this process because it's such a learning curve and it's such a like like a like a crazy transition that you know like yeah like I am making mistakes and you know like but but in making mistakes like I'm learning how to do things better the next day and it's really interesting because anytime I start to have like a little like oh my goodness like what am I doing like what am I doing I always have these like ran I, I'm not even gonna call them random because they're definitely not random but I get these reminders like somebody will either message me on Facebook or like hey like just tuned in to the traffic report like you're doing a great job like for instance today I covered an event and five different people came up to me and said how much they liked seeing me as the new addition and how good I'm doing and it's like little things like that like when I didn't feel like when I was like you know I'm having a rough day when you have these people come up to you and it reminds you that like first of all like 
your presence is felt and, and then your work doesn't go unnoticed. And it also, you know, applies the pressure to you that like people are tuning in, people are watching, people, people are listening and people, you know, support you. So it makes, it adds an extra level to like what you're doing every day. And it's not that I didn't already know that, but it's different when you're out in the community and people go out their way to speak to you or to encourage you or to motivate you. So um so it's cool like i said i'm at the very beginning stages and so i think it'll be interesting to see like six months from now like where are we at what are we doing um but i know that you know i, I take my job day by day and i give all i can in a day and then i reset and i do it all again so i think that for me right now i'm just trying to keep the i'm trying to stay le like level-headed and understanding that you know like there's going to be some mistakes but there's going to be some really really great things that happen too so I can't get caught up in either one. You know, I got to just make sure every day you, you, you do what you can with what you can and with all you can. So that's my motto. Every day I just, I listen to a good song in the morning. I listen to a good, um, you know, I might listen to a few podcasts, a few spiritual podcasts, and I'm good to go. I just, you, you, you got you to gotta keep your mind right. However, yeah, so you, however that can happen for you, you got to do it. That's a good question, though. So how do you do that? Like you just said, you listen to different things. What do you, what's your spiritual practice to keep yourself operating at a really high and positive level? Because you do yeah. have to be on to that beast of a show. Yeah, you, you do. Um, do when you I'm, a big, um, I'm a big uh, prayer person. I, I pray a lot. Um, and then on top of that, like I always try to make sure I remember that while this is my career, it's not who I am totally. And so I try to make sure I get back to things that make me happy. I love working out. And so finally, since my knee is doing better, I get to kind of um, like rejuvenate myself by like working out. Like I really enjoy working out. I live at the beach now, so that's awesome. Like I go to the beach often. Um, I just do like, like little, like very simple things like oh, like we have $5 movies on Tuesday here. So I'm gonna be in the movie. Like I hang out with people. Like I love eating new food. Like, I don't know. Like I still try to remember that, like I'm out here just living, you know? And fortunately I am blessed to have a career in which I love and feel purposeful and, you know, want to go to every day. But at the same time, like I'm just Lena. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just out here, you know, trying to have a good time. I like to travel. You know, I love my family. It's, it's interesting because I'm making like more friends down here. And so yeah. I'm just, you know, what, whatever makes you smile, you go out there and do you. it because life is it's short. You know, oh, don't you butter me up. <laughs> but, I'm yeah. so happy for you. I'm happy for you. And this success and happiness and all of this couldn't happen to a nicer person. Like you just oh. light up the screen with your happiness and your heartfelt like emotion. And people really need to hear what you have to say. I mean, when I listen to you, all I think is I want to listen to you more. So the people oh. in Jacksonville are so lucky to get to listen to you in the morning. And like, I feel like there's a show for you, like whether it be a YouTube channel or a podcast, you know, like we there's something for you. You need an interview or an interview show or something where you talk about spirituality or something like you light up this camera and I know that is the end of your day and you've been up since 3 a.m. Okay. I know that. So if you can light us up at this point, man, you just got it all. Yeah, you know, in, in the morning, you know, we're we're there. I, I try to keep the energy alive. Like it's good, it's nice. It's it's 353. I got, you know, a good four strong hours that, you know, to unwind. So I don't know. I try to just you know, I just try to be, um, I don't even try to be, I'm constantly reminding myself to be in a, like a constant state of gratitude. I think like that helps me get through like long days, like instead of like trying to be like, oh man, like I have to do this today. I'm always like, man, I get to go to work today. Then after I get to go to work, I get to, you know, talk to people for a living. I literally get to talk for hours for a living. And then, you know, I get to come home and thank goodness that my, my leg works now because now I get to work out. So I think like um, that's been another big thing. I think that's really kept me grounded. It's just when you are grateful for things, um, I think it's easier to, I, I mean, duh it's easier to appreciate things. Yeah. So then things don't seem like burdens. Or if you're at work for 13 hours or 14 hours one day, it's not like, oh my gosh. It's like, okay, well, at least I'm working. You know, at least, at least I'm at a job, you know? Right, because we all so, in a place where we haven't. So you're absolutely yeah. right. Focus on grows. Yeah, that's focus all you can do. 
what you focus on is literally all you'll see and what you become. So that's why I'm just out here trying to give me all the good things, okay? Because I there's enough bad, okay? There's there's right. enough bad. Right. So if I could just focus on a few of the good things, then I'm I'm good to go.